welcome welcome back my name is carson and welcome to my knitting channel where i ramble about knitting today we have a traditional podcast i got lots of finished objects so grab a drink i'm drinking some tea today in a cozy mug so yeah grab a drink grab your projects put it along and let's just get into it so welcome to podcast number seven i believe and we have a lot well we have a few things to talk about i have four finished objects which is crazy because <laughs> i went from finishing absolutely nothing to finishing everything i had a million whips all at once and i guess this is what happens when you have a million whips they eventually all get finished so i'm excited to share all my finished objects with you i have zero whips right now i literally just cast it off one of these oops I think I spilled my tea. <laughs> I just casted off one of these objects. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I have a fresh clean slate, but I think I do want to talk about two things that I know I will be casting on. Maybe tonight, it's Sunday, it's still a weekend. I still got time to cast on something new. So we'll see. Okay, so yes, this is my finished object episode. Um, let me take a sip of my tea. This is actually one of my acquisitions. <laughs> oh, it's on both sides. I thought it was just on one. I got this cool mug today. I really hope it focuses. It has a fox on it. I love fox. Foxes. Fox eye. Multiple fox. I love the animal fox. I don't know what the plural of fox is. Wow. Um, <laughs> I, but I do love foxes. I don't know. I love this animal. <laughs> And I found this at Joanne's today. I went in, I'll show you. I have very small acquisitions, uh, but I did get some buttons for a cast on that I am planning to cast on. So I found this and it was $3. It was on sale. So if they have a ton of all their fall stuff on sale right now, I guess because they're prepping for winter maybe already. I don't know, but a ton of stuff was on sale. And this was three bucks. It was $12 and this was three bucks. So yeah, I snagged this. My husband was like, do you need it? And I was like, yeah, for three dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I'm drinking, I'm actually drinking <laughs> morning sickness tea, a blend from my, uh, we have like an apothecary shop that's really cool. Not too far, just like down the road from us. Uh, I'm trying to think what it's called. I don't even know. But I got this whenever I was super sick. And it's honestly just like chamomile and ginger. So I still drink it sometimes, even though it's just kind of for chill calming vibes not because i'm sick anymore thank god but so yes starting today off kind of cozy um i made maternity overalls that i got from target uh i don't know why i'm just showing off everything <laughs> i'm wearing i'm not even wearing anything knitted right now it's still really hot where i am it's still really hot but this morning felt really really good so i have good vibes i have good vibes even though it's still hot, we can drink hot tea inside. You know, we can wear overalls. So, anyways, so I guess I'll just start because I've been rambling already. So first, this is truly, truly a miracle. <laughs> so these are my summer flowers. They're socks, and they their pattern is by This Handmade Life. Sliding's kind of not doing them too good. So I'm focused. It's still on my head. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. So these are summer flowers by This Handmade Life. They have this really pretty lace motif on the front, like on the instep. So this is my very first pair, completed pair of socks for myself. Wow, I actually did it, y'all. I did it. I knitted two socks and it felt so good. It felt so good. Um, yeah, it was really fun. I started this a while ago. Uh, I got the pattern. She was having like a birthday sale because it was her birthday and all of her patterns were on sale and they're already like fairly affordable. This was like three dollars I think for this pattern and I also got some yarn from a D-stash and so this is Sorella sock yarn. I'm pretty sure it's 100% superwash merino so they are pretty like dainty socks which that's okay um, because they also have the lace motif on the front so I wouldn't wear these with tennis shoes anyways you know i think they're birkenstock socks <laughs> exclusively and house socks exclusively i do still need to thread elastic through the top because they're ankle socks and they kind of do fall down my ankles like they fit they're just not you know they're not super tight so i got some elastic at joann's 
and I need to do that possibly today <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna thread them like through the top and through the bottom just on the cuff to make them fit better but yeah we got two socks so I knit this one or whichever one was first they literally both look the same I don't know which one I started first but I knit the first one super fast I'm talking super fast like three days maybe I was just really into it maybe a week maybe it was longer than that and then I casted the second one on that same day that I cast it off I did the cuff and then I paused on the heel and the heel just kind of laid there because I was working on other things I wanted to work on so I told myself the second sock would be a good uh travel project because we just got back well I guess not just anymore but last week this time last week, we got back from Little Rock. We took a little, like, baby moon. Also, my husband's birthday trip. <laughs> we don't really know. It was just for fun. Uh, over Labor Day weekend, we took a few days off work. So that was just so nice. That was so fun. Anyways, I'll talk more about that with one project in particular because it was kind of my vacation project. But I did knit the second sock on the way there. Which, we had two days of traveling. We traveled like three hours-ish to our hometown because we had to drop off our dogs with our uh, loving parents. <laughs> one dog went with one set of grandparents, the other dog went with the other. So, that was nice. So we had like a few hours one day. And then we had like four more hours to actually get to Little Rock the next day. So I had two days of travel time getting on this bad boy. And yeah, I, I did get to the, like the end of the lace work what do you call this the body of the foot uh until you get to the toes then i was like i'll just like take a break <laughs> so myself i said i can do the toes whenever i get home i don't know something about just fiddling around i use um nine inch circulars and i actually used my interchangeable set for this the chiagu set that i got for all the baby knits but i ended up using them for socks too because i was like these work perfectly with socks and i just got to the toes and i was like i don't like fiddling with trying to do like a, I don't know, it just gets tight sometimes and I have to do like a version of magic loop with nine inch needles sometimes. I don't know. It was just an excuse kind of. I was like, oh, I'll work on. <laughs> I'll do that whenever we get home, you know, and I'm stationary. But it was a really, really good car project. So I'm stoked about these. I'm going to wear them all the time, especially in the house. My feet get cold sometimes, even though it's really hot. Even in our house, it's kind of hot. Our windows are not well insulated. <laughs> I'm feeling the heat right now. <laughs> I'm right by the window. That's fine. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm excited about these. I'm really excited. They're, they are my very first pair. I have made a few pair of other socks for other people like my Nana and my unborn child. They both have pairs of socks from me <laughs> that are complete, but this was my first one for myself. So I just really, really like these. I think the color is called Golden Hour or Gold, no, Golden Peach, I think. So Rilla, so soft, so cozy. They're so squishy too. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to wear these bad boys. So those are my first official pair of socks for myself. My one sock curse is, is gone, truly. And you'll see why in a minute. I'm excited. Okay, you'll have to stick around though, because it might be my last one, like my very last project I show, because I just cast it off. Anyways, on to the second one. <laughs> this one I was super excited about too, and I still am. Let me find the front real quick. So this is my Friday. I didn't take notes today. I didn't write anything down. That was probably a mistake, because now I'm just trying to pull all this information out of the back of my brain. Friday, sweater baby. Petite knit. Oh, it's so cute. Oh my goodness. Can you see this? I know the light's kind of wonky, but it's so cute. I love it so much. It's adorable. I think the last time I was just done with the body and I think I had the sleeves left to go on my last episode. So the sleeves went pretty dang fast. I got the Chiago set. I used the nine inch circulars for those two and it made the arms a breeze. A breeze. I did not want to use magic loop or double point needles for that matter. But yeah, and I love it too because somehow, I don't know if everyone does this or if, I mean, she doesn't tell you how many stripes to do. She just tells you to knit a certain length, but it ended up, I ended up on the same stripe on the body as the sleeve as well. So it's the same color. Although if it didn't end up like that, I don't think I would have cared, but it was a good detail. I think I was like, wow, that's, 
that's nice. <laughs> it's all complete. So yeah, I use mostly Knit Picks Twill for this one. That's what the body color's in. And one of these stripes, like this, I think it's called Serpent Heather. And I really like this color. And I want to say I was going to buy more of it, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe to knit other baby stuff with. Just because I really like the color. And I have a good bit of the one skein left, but I know I'll need more. Because it doesn't go a super long way. I had to use two skeins for the whole body um and this is in the size two which is one to two months not quite newborn because i was like if he's like super chunky i don't want you know whenever he's born because this is like his birthday sweater that's what i'm officially calling it because it just has like fun confetti birthday colors i don't know i don't know i'm excited about it it's not super practical but that's okay, it's really cute, and this is something that I'm excited about. Maybe this is more of a me knit than a hip knit, <laughs> but that's okay. So yeah, and I used a lot of different stripey colors, um, just with stuff that I had bought. I had bought a few different skeins to make the festival sweater with, and then I decided that I wanted to make this one instead because it used stripes too, and I actually ended up using a few just random, uh, like fingering weight skeins I had around. Some were scraps, some I hadn't used yet. So yeah, and I didn't use that much of it, so I definitely have more of like my full skeins. The ones that were full skeins, I can definitely make something else with those too, so. I love it. <laughs> I'm like out of breath, I'm talking about this one so, I don't know, I just get really excited about this. It's so cute and it's so tiny. I don't know. I love it, personally. And I really love the folded collar detail. And someone asked me, um, they were making a different petite knit pattern, but she was worried that her collar was going to be too tight. And she asked me what I did to make mine not super tight. And I think the pattern just told me to cast on loosely. So I did a loose... <laughs> I did a loose long tail cast on and uh like i just loosely knit it two together to, or i knit the collar together too but i didn't do it too tightly and so i mean it can stretch out more even i don't want to stretch it out more but it, i think it'll definitely go over his noggin for sure and i was in awe about how it was blocked out because whenever i knitted it it was definitely smaller than this but that was fine to me i wasn't sure how it would block out because this is broken rib stitch and i had never done that before but um so it was like really squishy and like smaller if that makes any sense smaller and like bulkier in terms of how thick the stitch was if that makes any sense but then i blocked it and it got bigger and it like spread out and fluffed out so i was just amazed i was like wow <laughs> i've never never had that i don't know like that dramatic of a blocking experience before but it was really pretty and now it i don't know it's just like a normal sweater I'm excited about that one. <laughs> Anyways, I need to take a sip of tea. I'm getting over overwhelmed with my excitement. Hmm. Yum. I kind of want to get... I'm not a huge pumpkin spice person at all. Like, I do not do the lattes. I'm sorry. I don't... Not into that, but I do really love apple cider. So I want to get some apple cider that I can warm up and put in my mugs, you know? And I would like to try some, like, apple spice tea, too. That sounds really nice. If y'all have any favorite teas, like, uh, you know, fall, winter teas, please put them down below. I'm, like, in the mood for that. So please share what you like drinking in the fall. Or just now. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to take a break before I get uh, excited about <laughs> all this other stuff I have to talk about. Okay. So I guess I'll put my, uh, this one up. <laughs> okay, so the next one is a first, another first. Um, so I hopped on the ranunculus train. I've never knitted one before. I've seen everyone knit this pattern. I'm sure you've seen everyone knit this pattern as well. It's by Midori Hirose, I think is how you pronounce her name, possibly. She has a lot of really good patterns. I was looking at her Ravelry page and I flagged a bunch, or not flagged, but I saved a bunch of them. Just because she has a lot of really good ones, even besides Ranunculus. But you've probably seen that pattern before. It's everywhere. It's on Instagram. It's on Ravelry. It's a very, very, very popular pattern. 
Now, I said this was a free one, and I swear to you, I got it for free a while ago. I swear I did. And I know I've heard other people, like other podcasters say it's free too. And I swear, whenever I got it, it was like a one size situation. But I know it's updated a few times in my lab, in my, <laughs> in my library. And, um, and I don't know if she upgraded the sizes, but now there's a ton of different sizes, which is awesome. And it's also paid for, I believe. So I don't know if I just bought it at a point it was free and then it got swapped paid for after it was like a, not a one size fits all situation. I swear that is, that's my story that I'm sticking to because if you look at it right now, it's not free, but I swear I've heard the people say that and I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I got it free a long time ago. It just took me forever to actually knit it. I don't know. I'm gonna link everything below. It's not, I don't think it's free anymore, but it is so worth it if you're interested in it because there's a ton of different sizes. It's very customizable to whatever you want to do, so. Anyways, I'll show you. <laughs> I showed this in my last podcast, but this is my ranunculus. Or as Alex from the Knitting Society said in her last podcast, ranun ranunculus. <laughs> I love the way she pronounced that. Ranunculus. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, but yeah, this is my ranunculus. So I did a few modifications, but nothing crazy. It's so light and airy, and I've worn it a couple times around the house. I haven't worn it out yet officially, but I love it so much. And it's the perfect summer, fall transition, transitional piece for me. I used Barocco Remix DK. So it's a bunch of recycled fibers. It's like acrylic, nylon, wool, linen. It's like a ton of stuff. Cotton. I don't know if there's wool in it actually. It could just be like summer blends. Cotton, linen, acrylic, nylon. I don't know. I don't have the label anymore. I do have an extra skein of this. I think I'm gonna knit a baby something with it because it's just such a nice fabric and it's, I don't know, I just really like it. It's super wash. Anyways, I love this guy. I love it. I was loving it whenever I knitted it up. I think I showed it to you and I had already finished the yoke, which is insane <laughs> because I knitted on it. I want to say I started it two weeks ago and I knit the yoke in a Sunday, like a single Sunday and I wasn't even knitting all day. And I finished this one in a week. Like I finished it before we left on our trip and I did take it with me. I didn't end up wearing it. Um, I kind of wish I would have. I just kind of forgot that I had it, <laughs> honestly, but I'll definitely wear it soon. And just look at the texture, like the yolk. I know this lighting's a bit odd, but it's just so nice. And I talked a little bit in my last podcast episode about a mistake I made in the yolks, uh, which wasn't terrible. It was, it just doesn't, it might not look like everyone else's. So if you're interested in that, you can go back <laughs> and look at that episode. And I think I talked a bit about my modifications too, so I won't talk too much about those. I did just do a long tail cast on. I didn't do the tubular cast on. And I did, I just did the regular, there's like a boat neck option and then a regular option, but the regular option tells you to do the tubular with less stitches casted on. And I just did a long tail cast on with the total number of stitches you end up with. And that worked for me. So yeah, it's not, it's not like a super tight neck. It's around my head, but it's not a boat neck either. I just love it so much. It's so airy. Ugh, I love it. And now the sleeves, I ended up um, going with the long sleeve version in the pattern. Cause there's a short sleeve version, a long sleeve version. The short sleeve version, you just kind of, um, you don't keep knitting on the sleeve. You knit on it, you like cast it off and then you knit the rest of the body. So it's more of a cap sleeve in my opinion, but I wanted something longer. So I decided to do the long sleeve version and I knitted like maybe five rows of stockinette and then I did ribbing at the end. So I don't know if you can tell, but that's what I went with. And you can do whatever the heck you want because it's pretty dang easy to customize. So if you want to, you know, do what they do, you can, or do what the pattern recommends, <laughs> you can. Or if you want to do something different, you can. I guess you can do that with every pattern, but I don't know why this one just seems so much more easy to customize. And then I knit it, I think I knit the body actually longer than what it told you to for the size I made. And honestly, I want to say I made the size too. It has a bit of positive ease to begin with. 
So I just went with the size two and I really like it. And I did not do gauge whenever I cast this on, but I want to say someone asked me for gauge. I think that was this pattern. They asked me for gauge, uh, cause they thought it was like a really big gauge for DK weight yarn, maybe, I don't remember. But so I ended up checking it and my gauge was just like one or two stitches off. So, and it blocked out. So it's pretty perfect in my opinion <laughs> for someone who doesn't gauge that much. Turned out pretty perfect. <laughs> one or two stitches off and now arguably it could be exactly on it since I blocked it and it got bigger. But it fits me perfectly. Um, yeah, I like this one. So I think the body, it told me to knit shorter length and then do a longer, longer ribbing. But I ended up knitting it longer and doing shorter ribbing. So it might end up being the exact same length as what it says to. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It worked for me. Yay. Oh gosh. I'm wondering if this cloud's gonna pass. Okay, I had to take a break. There was a cloud <laughs> that made it really dark, so I tried to line things up. I don't even remember what I was saying. Like, I was just talking about my ranunculus. But anyways, I really like it. So if you haven't tried it yet, I truly, I am not a hop on the boat, hop, not on the boat, hop on the bandwagon type of gal. <laughs> um, so I hadn't been ranunculus in forever. I kind of held off. I did really love the look of the lace work though, and the texture, and I hadn't knit a textured yoke like that before. So one day I was just like, yeah, let's just knit a ranunculus. I saw Alex from the Certainty Knitting Society's ranunculus that she was making. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's time. <laughs> and I already had the yarn, not specifically for this pattern in particular, but I decided to switch plans and just go for it. And I really like it. And it's big enough to wear I can tuck it into things or I can even wear it and like it's not too small for me yet because <laughs> um, I am pregnant and <laughs> sometimes, I don't know, I've just been having to get bigger <laughs> clothes to fit my growing stomach but that's what happens, that's what happens. But yeah, this one has enough positive ease, enough flowiness that I can wear either way right now, which is perfect. I think I'm just gonna lay it like this this whole entire episode. <laughs> because it's so nice so pretty anyways so yeah i think i do want to knit another one in a chunkier not chunkier yarn but i think technically yes in a more textured yarn and a thicker bigger weight <laughs> so like a worsted maybe i don't know not anytime soon but later down the line so yes this was that finished object that i'm really excited about now my last finished object. Oh my goodness, let me show you. Oh. I knit another pair of socks, y'all. I knit another pair of socks. Can you believe it? I went from knitting zero pairs of socks for myself, just like single ones, like every few months, very sporadically, and I now have two. Two pairs of socks. Which is crazy. And aren't these so fun? Wow. And <laughs> this was not intentional. Like, this was not something I thought about. I wasn't like, I'm gonna make more socks. Uh, this happened on vacation. <laughs> so I really enjoy going to... Oh, well, I guess I'll say this. So this is just like a vanilla sock. I kind of sort of use Summer Lee Knits. I'm so basic sock pattern. Kind of. I modified it a bit. I just kind of did my own thing. I'm kind of to the point now where I can just cast on a sock and I can knit it and not think about it besides setting up the heel flap, like the heel turns, setting it up the very first couple rows. I need help with that because <laughs> I just can never remember how many stitches to knit back and forth. But then after I set it up, I'm good to go. <laughs> so yeah, this is kind of sort of Summerly Knits, kind of just sort of whatever the heck I wanted. I think I cast it on 64. I cast it on six, well, so it's 64 stitches. I did a, a two by two ribbed cuff and then just knit the body. Oh yeah, so I'm sorry, I'm getting, let me just tell you the story about these um, before I get into everything else. They were really damp because I literally just uh, soaked them and put them on sock blockers before this. But we were on vacation, we were in Little Rock, which was kind of a random 
spot for us. I had never been to Little Rock. I'd driven through Arkansas. We had been to some other parts of Arkansas, like mostly on the Buffalo River for canoeing and we went hiking there one year. I don't remember the town we were in. It was pretty small. It's like a mountainy kind of town. Anyways, we were originally thinking, so we moved to a part of Texas that is kind of far away from things that we enjoy. <laughs> Like, we live kind of close to Houston, and so everything is a little bit farther than we're used to because, uh, so we're from East Texas, and it's pretty central-ish to places. Like, it's three hours to Dallas, four and a half hours to Austin, you know? It's just three hours to Oklahoma, like Broken Bow. So now we were looking at all these places that we've been to before, like Austin, we were thinking, oh, we can go to Austin, but it's pretty dang far from us now. And we wouldn't have a place to drop the dogs off. So we were like, maybe we should just go to our, go to our hometown first, drop the dogs off, and then, you know, pick somewhere else because it's like more centrally located. So we were just looking at like routes. Yeah, I don't know why I'm telling you all this. <laughs> but we were originally thinking about going to Memphis but then we saw our, we saw Little Rock was on the way to Memphis and we were like, maybe we should go to Little Rock. And my uncle's been there quite a bit. So he was like, yeah, Little Rock's the better option, in his opinion, just for visiting. So we went to Little Rock and it was so cool. I really want to move there. There's so much fun stuff. Uh, it reminds me of Austin. I lived in Austin for a while. And we originally thought we might wanted to move back to Austin because we were in Washington for a bit, but we went and visited and it just didn't feel the same. I mean, obviously I haven't been gone for three years, but it just felt weird. I don't know, I can't explain it. Didn't feel like the place for us anymore. So we went to Little Rock and it was like Austin, just like smaller, not, not much traffic at all. But also there were people still there. They were outside, they were walking around. The weather was nice. It was like 70s and there was a breeze. And people were our age too. Like everyone we saw was pretty much our age with like kids and stuff. So we were like, wow, this, <laughs> this feels nice. Anyways, I fell in love. There was, it was just so nice to be at a place that has local things because where we are now, it's more like, strip malls and chains and <clears throat> that's just a summer vibe really so it was nice i don't know it was just nice to get out we really liked it and so i love going to yarn shops whenever i am in a place that has them we have one here in our town now but i just like i don't know it's a part of the experience the travel experience for me so i went to yarn candy i think it's called in little rock and she had so much good stuff. <laughs> I had a few thoughts in my mind. I kind of wanted to make the balloon card again by Petite Knit. And so I was looking for yarn for that, thinking I might could find some there, but she honestly had so much stuff that I was extremely overwhelmed. <laughs> and I was like, I can't pick, like, I don't know. And I was also on the hunt for more aut autumnal colors, like um, browns and rusty coppers, you know? And I didn't see anything that like really caught my eye in that color. There were so many pretty colors, but like for that specifically. So I was like, you know what? <laughs> my poor husband, Logan was there. He, su he supported me, you know, he was like, uh, I don't know. He was helping me look at stuff. And I have so much yarn for baby stuff already. I was like, I really don't need any yarn for baby stuff. So I was like, you know what? What if I just get like a sock set and I can make a pair of socks that remind me of the place we were in. So I looked forever at sock yarn because there was so much of it, so pretty. Oh, there's so much stuff to look at. And finally I was like, you know what? I've always wanted to try self-striping or self-designing sock yarn. And so she had a few options. And so I got this. So this is also an acquisition. This is trekking. Oh, come on camera. There we go. <laughs> this is... I'll just move my head with it. <laughs> this is a uh, Trekking XXL. I don't know where the label is. Probably threw it away. But I want to say it's a different country of origin. Germany, perhaps? Don't, don't quote me on that. But uh, I've never seen this one before and I'm pretty sure the stuff in the label was in a different language. 
I don't know, it's just really interested me and I was on the hunt for, like I said, autumnal colors even with just my sock sets because I'm just in the mood for fall, y'all, I'm in the mood for fall. And I was kind of hesitant at first because this has lots of um, like greens, which I really, oh gosh, sorry, my head is it's focusing on my head. This has lots of like greens and it has some grays in there and it has, oh, there we go. <laughs> it has some, it ha does have orange, which I was drawn to, but it's kind of bright. It's more bright than I like. Like I like terracotta orange, like my plant pot back here. And this is kind of more neonish orange, like lighter orange. So I wasn't really sure in it. There was no sample on the label or near it. I couldn't, or not that I saw. So I didn't really know how it was going to knit up. I just knew that it was like self striping or designing because it had all those, you know, fun stuff. It had all the fun stripies in it <laughs> and stuff. So I knew, and I'm pretty sure the shop owner told me that it was self striping. So I picked it up. Cause I did like the greens and I'm not a huge fan of grays, honestly, but I was like, it's just a little bit, I wasn't really sure what it would look like. And so I was like, maybe I could find a contrast color to do the cuffs and the heels and the toes in to kind of like draw in what I, like draw in the autumn vibes I was really going for. So I picked up, I have another skein left cause I picked up two. I am so worried about mini skeins. I never know how much is actually going, how far it's actually going to go. But once one mini skein was perfect for all my, the toes and the, you know, whatever, was all the contrasting stuff. One was fine. So I'm stuck with this one, which is fine because I can do something else with it. But I got this, it is Emma's yarn and it is Wish You Were Beer. <laughs> That's the colorway. And it's just this really pretty orange and it's sock yarn. It's like 75% merino, 25, well, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, so traditional sock yarn. And I really like this color. And it is a little bit different orange than what's in the pattern, actually. I wish this would just focus on this bad boy instead of my face. <laughs> so it's a little bit different. I don't know if you can really tell from like this orange. It's darker, which I like this color better. But I don't think, I think it ties it in better. I'm, I'm proud of my, <laughs> of my choice. I was hesitant at first, but I'm proud of it now. So yeah, I like it. And I just, I love, I love how this knitted up. It was so fast. I knit one of these socks. I started it like the day I got the yarn because we were driving around through kind of the mountain area, kind of <laughs> hills. We were driving around for a bit because we do just like to drive. And so I knit on it then. And I knit on it at night because we were watching movies in our Airbnb at night. And then I knit on it on the way back home. And I finished one sock by the time we got home. Which is funny because I was in the car and I was like, I'm doing these toes. <laughs> even though I had not even finished the summer socks. I was waiting on doing the toes and I got home. That was my excuse. But on these, I was like, I'm finishing the toes. And I did. Um, and then I casted the this guy on the whatever. I'm sorry, my words are just gone today. I've lost all, <laughs> all my words. I don't even know. I don't know how to talk today. Cast it on the cuff. <laughs> and yeah, I did the cuff. And then I did a little bit of the leg. And honestly, I think I did, you know what? I, I, <laughs> you know what? I did all of this. I did the leg, the heel. And then I was like, all I have left to do on my summer socks or my summer flower socks is, are the totes. That's all I have to do. That's all I have left to do. So yesterday I finished those socks, the pink ones, and it didn't take me long at all. So I was like, I have to finish those before I finish these because I casted these on after I finished those. So I finished those and then I immediately started on these again and I knit pretty much this whole, I knit like the whole foot and toe today of the second sock cast them off, weaved in all the ends, blocking currently, and I love them a whole lot. So yeah, I'm excited about these. Yeah, that's, <laughs> so I have four finished objects and two are socks, which is just insane. So I know these are sturdy enough, the content of the fiber, I think it, because it has that nylon in it. This is also like 75% marine, 
75% wool, 25% nylon, so there is a bit more hold to these than my summer flower socks with the yarn I chose to use for those, which is fine. So these I think I'll definitely be wearing in like tennis shoes, boots, uh, Birkenstocks for sure. I think they would go great with the, with the outfit I have on right now, just on my feet, because I have these cool green overalls on. Anyways, I got really worked up over that. Wow. They're kind of damp. I'm just going to set them down. <laughs> I'll go back up later. So yeah, that was really fun. So now I think of Arkansas whenever I think of those socks. And look at them. I just love them a whole lot. And I think I have decided, because we will be gone like every single weekend in October. <laughs> We have a lot of stuff to do back in our hometown. Lots of exciting, busy things going on. So I think I'm just gonna always have a sock in the car with me. Cause it's like the perfect, the perfect traveling project. It's so portable, so easy. And even the transitional like pieces are pretty easy, like heel turning and picking up stitches for the gusset. I don't know. It just, it flew by and I was like, this is easy. <laughs> I don't know why why I have such a hard time with socks, or why I did. But that curse has ended, it's gone. <laughs> so maybe this is just a weird pregnancy mojo I have right now of socks, but I hope it'll stick around because I think they'll be a really good project. I think I can knock out a few of them. And they're perfect because they're for my feet, you know? My feet are pretty much right now the same size. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I think the next ones I'm going to cast on are actually going to be the Magic Toadstool socks. Because I think I could do the color work at home. Because I don't want to have to bring all those different colors along with me for a car ride. I mean, I could, but I don't want to. <laughs> so I think I could do the color work at home because it's. I think it's just the leg. And then I could finish everything else on the road. I don't know. We'll see. So those are my next cast ons. And it's really funny because I did a fall planning video. <laughs> about planning for fall and my next cast ons aren't even <laughs> i didn't even mention them in that video uh because they kind of changed my plans kind of changed now this one i have been planning on doing this is an acquisition i've had this yarn it is vintage dk barocco in pumpkin spice it's kind of this like reddish orange and my plans are to cast on another maple baby overall with this one and i think so the reason I'm saying that is because I got some buttons. That's my acquisition. <laughs> and so I got these buttons, which it's kind of dark. I don't know if you can even see them. And my head is... There we go. So they're kind of... I don't think they're actual wood, but they look like wood. I got them from Joann's. They're La Mode. I don't know. They look like wood. So I think that will go really nicely with the color of this one. And I think... Because the last one I made, it was like this jasmine green color. And it was short sleeve. I modified it to be short sleeve, but I think I'm just going to do a smaller size because this is DK, which is what the pattern calls for. <laughs> and so I think I'm going to do like the newborn size maybe because it also reminds me of Christmas because he'll be here in December. Maybe this will be like his little Christmas outfit. I don't know. It'll be really cute anyways. So yeah, either because I haven't knitted him a ton of newborn stuff. I don't think I've knitted him anything actual newborn size yet. I also want to make him... I saw this really cute um, idea on Instagram. I'm not sure who did it. Oh, I should have saved it, but they made a sweater for their baby that was a, like a, a size one year. And they put his name on it and they took pictures of him in it every month, like a monthly thing. So from like the day he was born to like month one, month two, so they could see him grow into it. I thought that was really cute. So I think that's something I definitely want to do before he's here is to make him his own sweater with his name on it and make it in a size one year. So that is also on on my list of things. Oh yeah, and I was gonna say. So I think also I was gonna grab buttons for a cardigan for myself because instead of the balloon cardigan by Petite Knit, I think I want to cast on the champagne cardigan by Petite Knit because I I actually went to my yarn store two days ago and I was looking for just like a plain oatmeal, brown, something simple for a cardigan. Um, and I couldn't find anything that I really liked. So I was like, you know, Carson, you have, 
I don't even know where it is. I'm not gonna try to find it. <laughs> I have my Gregorius sweater that I'm going to rip up and it, I, in my mind it's orange, but I think truly it's an orange brown color. So it's pretty neutral. So I was like, you know what? That's worsted. The champagne cardigan looks very similar in my opinion to the balloon cardigan minus the sleeves aren't that balloon shape and it's in worsted weight, not decay. So I think I'm gonna do that one because it would go faster because it's, you know, bigger needle sizes, bigger yarn, and I actually have the yarn for that already that I could use. So I think that'll be my next personal cast on. But then again, it could change because that was not even in my fall knitting plans video. <laughs> kind of changed it, but that's okay. Alrighty, well, I think that's all I have for you today. I feel like even though today is a weekend, my I'm still jumbled. <laughs> my mind is still jumbled. And I'm sorry I cannot get words out properly, but hopefully you understand. Hopefully you can um, decode <laughs> whatever language I'm speaking right now. Because uh, I'm struggling today. <laughs> I'm struggling every day. My mom the other day, we were back in our hometown. I don't know. I used to keep up with the weeks pregnant I was pretty regularly because I think I was counting down when I was stopping sick. <laughs> and when people told me I was stopping sick. So I was like you know, 13 weeks, I should be not sick, you know? So I was just, I knew exactly what week I'm pregnant I was, but someone asked me and I was, honestly wasn't really sure because <laughs> I hadn't checked in a while. And then I checked and I was like, what is it? I think it's 26 weeks. And my mom was like, yeah, you're like over six months pregnant. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, I didn't realize that, but I am, <laughs> I don't know what I thought. So I feel like with each day, my brain just gets a little bit more mushy. A little bit more mushy. <laughs> That's fine though. That's okay. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what I have today. Four finished objects. Um, so the next podcast, I'll probably have a lot of whips. We'll see. Maybe some more socks and some baby knits because I haven't done, which I guess I did just cast off my Friday better. Friday, <laughs> my Friday baby sweater. Uh, before our trip It just seems like it's been so many weeks, but it hasn't been I think it's just because we traveled everything feels really far away But I didn't finish that one but like two weeks ago, maybe I was gonna say I had to knit a ton of baby stuff recently, but I did just knit that so I'll cast on some more stuff. I really need to make some more tiny mushrooms Because I <laughs> committed to making him a mobile like a mobile, I don't know how you say that word, to go above his crib, just like a bunch of tiny mushrooms. But I, if that doesn't work out for me, <laughs> if I cannot get my act together, because I'm gonna be gone a lot. We don't have that much time left. Wow. I think I might just do a little mushroom garland. <laughs> so I need to knit some more mushrooms. Who knows what you'll see in these next few episodes. I don't know, I have a clean palette, clean slate. I could say I'm making the champagne card again and then completely change my mind and make something else. So you'll just have to wait until the next episode. Because truly, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm a wild card. Wild card. I cannot speak. Okay. I need to go eat some food. <laughs> As always, we're ending with uh, eating food. Alrighty. Well, thanks for sticking around if you did. This has been a very long ramble. But, I mean, what's new? What's new? That's not new. That's pretty normal for me. So I hope you have a really good week. Really fun day. Hope today's chill for you. Hope it's a fun day and maybe we'll get lots of knitting done. So, yeah, thanks for sticking around and I guess I'll see you next time. Bye!